Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. Morning, Pastor. Have, uh, well, first of all, before I ask for children, maybe, yep, I see some. Um, do we have prayer requests in addition to those that are listed in the bulletin or on the pink sheet? Uh, anyone from Zoom have a prayer request? You can unmute your line and share it with us. I don't hear any. So let's have the children come up. Maybe child this time. <laughs> there we go. How are you, Noah? Good. You want to hold the cross? And let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our friends. Please keep us all healthy. Amen. Off to Sunday school. We continue with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for our opening
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. pray. Lord God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fail, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Genesis. The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden but of the tree of knowledge of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in that for in the day that you eat it eat of it you shall die now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the lord god had made he said to the woman did god say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden the woman said to the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was, <clears throat> and then it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that, <clears throat> that they were naked, and they sewed fig, fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord.
I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear him up so that, they will, that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And the devil said to him, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The gospel of the Lord. Your sisters and brothers in Christ. Today's first lesson, very, very familiar to most of us from the third chapter of Genesis, presents the ancient Hebrew understanding of how it is that all of us are sinful. The ancient Hebrews collapsed all of their understanding of where sin came from into this story of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. As it's presented in the Old Testament, and as it seems to be affirmed in certain places in the New Testament, we are all being punished on an ongoing basis for Adam and Eve's sin. And I'm here to tell you that that's wrong. Not that the Bible's wrong, but that presentation of their guilt being paid for by us is wrong. The story that's told about Adam and Eve choosing to disobey God is not just an ancient story from three or four thousand years ago. It's a story that is as contemporary as today. You And I, every day of our lives, we choose to reach for that piece of fruit that has been forbidden. We do what we know is wrong. We take that fruit 
and we eat it. We sin. Not Adam and Eve sin, and so somehow we are guilty. We make the same choice that Adam and Eve made. Choose to disobey what God has told us to do. And we do it every day of our lives. If that were the end of the story, then we would all be in really a miserable place. Estranged from God because of our choices. Separated from God because of our choices. With no way back from our part, on our part. There's no way for us to work our way back into God's good graces. But that also is part of the story that is woven throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. God continually reaches out to us, reaches out with forgiveness, with restoration, with reconciliation, God calls us back into the relationship of love and of obedience. The sin of Adam and Eve is a metaphor. It's a story, a powerful story, that describes our daily experience and our constant need for forgiveness. We gather here week in and week out because here we hear the word of forgiveness. Here we, we rebuild our, our, uh, our identity around this notion that we are, in fact, beloved by God. Despite our sin, in spite of our sin, God still loves us. It's always God's desire to forgive and to restore. There will always be temptations around us. There will always be things that we are really interested in doing that we know are wrong. Even Jesus was tempted. That's the story that I just read from Matthew's gospel. Even Jesus was tempted by the devil, but he resisted temptation. Did you notice in each case where the devil told Jesus a lie, Jesus responded with God's word, with God's truth. The devil always lies to us. In that wonderful story of Adam and Eve, when Eve is talking with the serpent, he's not identified as the devil, talking to the serpent. And the serpent says, what did, what did God tell you about the fruit of this tree? And Eve responds straightforwardly, God told us not to eat from this tree or we would die. And the devil tells his first lie. 
you will not die. God is wrong. Who are you going to believe? And Eve, I mean, I chose to believe the serpent and to disobey God's word. I hope that you can see yourself in that story. I hope that the next time that you are tempted to do something that you know you're not supposed to do, you'll stop. You'll hear the lie that is being proclaimed by that temptation. And you'll respond. I am a child of God. Go away, Satan. To hell with you. Amen. Let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You alone are God. Sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give vision and wisdom to bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the ministry of administration. Counsel all who faithfully lead your people into the future. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living creature. Bless those who work in fields and orchards that the world is nourished by the fruits of, your, of their labor. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
You know our temptations. Sustain those who govern and legislate. Instill in them a sense of your justice and righteousness, that equity and peace would pervade all regions and nations of the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are hiding, you are a hiding place for all in distress. Draw near to exiles and accompany all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with your steadfast love, especially Iris, Joanne, Linda, Darlene, Lori, Jane, Gloria, Lynn, Mary Jo, John and Jackie, Terry, Arlene, Sue, Pam, Landon, Alice, Carl and Bev, Eleanor, Rich, Phyllis, Dick, Jerry and Darlene, Eloise, Rob, Ruth, Gordon, Glenn and Veronica, Kristen, Joan, those on our extended prayer list, and those we mention either aloud or to ourselves. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You offer abundance to all. Bless the ministries of hospitality in this place. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially worship greeters, coffee hour hosts, and Sunday school teachers. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Celebrations this week, birthdays of Thomas Roth, Cheyenne Martinez, Nancy Domkowski, Cheryl Hanna, Noah Roth, Landon Walger, and Margaret Willis, and the baptisms of Grayson Walger. You alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age, especially Joanne Hose. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. <laughs>
I flopped out. Why? Hello, can I have your pictures up again, please? I invite you to stand as you are able. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us in these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. 
When he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them saying, drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming again. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We join in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and eat and drink the gifts of God for all the people of God.
May this gift of the living body and blood of Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, those who have an announcements, please come forward, if, if anyone. Just a couple of things. Um, uh, Wednesday, we will have Wired Word. Um, it's uh, one o'clock on Wednesday. The, if you want to read the, um, <clears throat> read the story that it's based on, that this week's uh, lesson is based on, the um, pamphlets or the uh, printout is on the shelf right outside uh, Barb's office. Um, we will not have Bible study Wednesday night. We will have... Um, um, evening prayer or vespers um, on Zoom. Um, Wired Word is both Zoom, it's hybrid, uh, Zoom and in person. Uh, Wednesday night, our uh, gathering will be only by Zoom for four weeks. And then the fifth week, we will have a live gathering as well. Um, are there other, the church council meets this coming uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, if you've got anything to come before the church council, please make sure it gets to church council president Dan Ryman or to me uh, in advance. Um, any other announcements or things to share with one another? How many people in worship? 68 people in attendance and how many households on Zoom? And 13 on Zoom. And uh, uh, good to be together even, uh, even uh, when we can't be together. Uh, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, I invite you to stand if you are able for the benediction and uh, our final hymn. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us God's peace. Amen.